Hey guys, Chris here. Tonight we have a story about a father and a son who go sledding in Northern California and there they have a very frightening encounter and it's kind of an odd situation and at the end there's a blatant government cover-up. That's next. Okay, so there's a lot of snow up in the mountains right now, so I am in the warm cabin setup tonight. Really cozy here tonight. And I'm drinking, appropriately enough, by the new Belgian brewing company, Accumulation IPA. Check that out. That is a hazy IPA, and that is an accumulation of snow. And the Sierra Nevadas are getting some really good snow. That's going to be great for our snowpack, for our rivers, for all kinds of things in this area and out west here. So we have been having a 20 year drought and I've been watching this thing for a long time. So, whew. That's a great name. <laughs> Accumulation IPA. Really tasty too. Cheers. <laughs> Okay, Northern California is Mount Shasta, 14,180 feet above sea level. Second highest peak in the Cascade Range. Southernmost volcano in the Cascade Range. And it's also a dormant but potentially active volcano. They said it went off in the uh, last went off in the 1700s, long time ago. It is also in the Shasta Trinity National Forest, which is 2.2 million acres. Just nine miles south and west of there is a small town called Mount Shasta. And Mount Shasta is where a young boy named Tyler lived in 1999. And Tyler was at school one day in Mount Shasta and it was December and it was snowing all morning and by noon the school had called the day off and we're gonna have a snow day for the kids and said yeah just go home <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow or after the storm clears he gets on the bus beats the treacherous road conditions gets home and he as soon as he walks in the door his dad says hey Tyler Guess what? I got the day off too, and I'm going to take you sledding this afternoon. So they decided to go sledding up in the mountains, the hills around there. And his dad has done a lot of cross country skiing, and he knew the area really well. And so he picked out a spot that they could go, and they got an inflatable saucer and a runner sled. And what a runner sled is, is the wooden sled with the metal runners on it, if you guys remember that. I had one of these growing up myself. I loved it. I could steer it because of the handles on it, and the runners would turn just enough where you, if you're heading for a tree or people, you could steer early enough and avoid people. Not like a bicycle, but you could still steer. You had some control. And I would lay on my stomach on mine because I liked the feeling of steering with my hands. And I was low enough to the ground. If I needed to bail out, I could just roll off of it and let the sled go into the parking lot or into the tree or whatever. They didn't have to worry as much as opposed to sitting. And you could still sit on them and turn them with your feet. You guys probably remember those. And so they went to this hill. It was still snowing pretty good. And they found out there was no one else there. And Tyler was really excited about this. And he remembers going up the hill, sliding down, and his dad was sliding. They would trade sleds. And they were having just a great time. And about 30, maybe 40 minutes into it, 
they were both standing at the top of this hill and he noticed his dad was staring down into this tree line that was at the bottom of the hill to the left. There was a forest. And then at the bottom of the hill to the right, it kind of was clear towards where the vehicle was parked. And his dad was staring and he later learned what he was seeing in the forest was he saw a shape moving through inside the tree line. And he would see it intermittently. You'd see something running and then it was trees and he would see a shape, a dark shape moving pretty quickly at the base of the hill to the left in the forest. And then Tyler looked and he looked down there and he didn't see anything and then whatever this thing was, it stepped out of the tree line where they could clearly see it in the snow. And it was on two feet, standing there still, motionless, really broad shoulders, this dark shape had to be 80, maybe 85 yards away from them. And they're both staring at it, his dad was squinting at it, trying to determine what it was, and it wasn't relatable to anything that he knew and his dad wasn't seeing anything like oh there's a bear or that's a mountain lion and just then this thing dropped to all fours and started running to the base of the hill crazy continued up and it was coming up the slope and it looked like it was coming towards them his dad is still staring at it trying to determine what it was and it wasn't anything relatable to anything Tyler knew of. It wasn't a bear, mountain lion. And his dad is staring at it and Tyler's feeling, this looks possibly dangerous. And so he says, dad, dad, what is that? And right in that moment, his dad turns, picks him up, sets him on the sled, gets on the back of the sled, and they take off and go down the hill. They leave the other sled at the top of the hill. Sounds crazy, sounds suicidal almost. <laughs> but they were at the top of this hill, there was nowhere else to go. The back of the hill sloped off really steep and at the bottom that was a chain link fence. So this was their best chance to get away. They're going down this slope really fast and this thing is coming from the left kind of an angle towards them and they're angling to the right towards where the car was parked. Turning it just enough, his dad was pushing it with his feet just enough so he could turn to the right but not enough, not so much that he would flip the sled over. That would be a disaster. Tyler has got his hands over his face and he doesn't want to look at what's going to happen. They're heading down and then Tyler can't stand anymore and he looks between his fingers and he can see this thing coming right towards him a little bit from the left large black shoulders and he can see the front legs are now arms it's running on its arms black shiny hair a brow ridge on its face flat face thin mouth wide and this long black hair around it big round eyes and it gallops right towards them right at that moment his dad says get out of here really loud and they go past it and just at that moment he thought this thing was going to reach out and just knock them both off the sled it didn't they continued down the hill got to the bottom of the hill Tyler's dad pushes him off the sled stands up picks up Tyler by the arm and they both start running. They leave the sled behind. They're running on the trail that they made coming in. Had some little bit of snow on it since it had been snowing. And Tyler was running as fast as he could but the snow felt thick and deep for him. And he wasn't as running as fast as he'd like to. His dad said, don't look back. Tyler kept running, but he couldn't help it, and he looked back, and at that moment, he saw this thing, and it looked like it just had broken, and was heading back maybe up the hill. He continued to run, 
and he looked again and he could see it at the top of the hill and it was looked like it was pacing back and forth now upright again crazy they were heading towards the car and they saw coming up this small slope some men that looked like they were in the military they had guns weapons his dad said hello and one of the men stepped forward and started talking to his dad they both turned and were walking away from Tyler and he couldn't quite hear them but it sounded like his dad was describing the experience they just had what was going on with them he couldn't hear them anymore they were still talking and then a moment later that man gestured for the other men soldiers to go in a direction and just then Tyler had this thought that they're heading in the wrong direction and he was going to say something and his dad turned and looked at him and he could see in his dad's eyes that his dad was saying be quiet don't say anything and Tyler looked at his dad and then he was quiet and the men headed off in that direction a moment later this guy whatever this his rank was started patting down his dad looking for something Tyler initially thought he was looking for weapons he later thought about it and he was almost certain he was looking for a camera or whatever kind of device that would be an obstacle to this blatant cover-up that he was experiencing he didn't find anything let them go they walked back to the car left and it was quite a ways later that his dad revealed to him that he deliberately sent them in the wrong direction and he explained that when they were coming down the slope on the sled he saw in the face of this animal Sasquatch <laughs> running on all fours that he saw this overwhelming fear and that this thing just wanted to be left alone and Tyler always remembered that experience that he had near Mount Shasta but he also remembered even more that his dad showed this compassion or empathy to whatever this thing was and he just thought that was really amazing and Tyler also thought what if mankind was to get a hold of one of these mysterious beings and what they would do to it I mean think of the black market and poachers and how people could torment one of these things think of like King Kong in chains being on display in that really old movie and Tyler felt he was always concerned about what if humankind was to get a hold of one of them and that is our story for tonight <laughs> nice winter night warm and cozy in here crazy story and uh, <laughs> can't imagine I've been getting uh, a lot of stories from you guys really interesting stories I've been talking to some of you on the phone I've been emailing with some of you a lot of stuff going on I got a lot more stories I really appreciate you guys watching my channel I am going to be getting back out there but I'm it's kind of nice being indoors on these cold dark nights if you guys have a story please send it to me at basecampchris2 at gmail.com that would be great I read everything I can't retell and put on the channel every story but everything you send that's your experience is helpful to what I'm doing here and what we're talking about so please send that in I, at least I could read it and I really appreciate that and if you guys like stories about the strange unexplained and things that go bump in the night please like and subscribe <laughs> do that and we're getting close to a hundred thousand subscribers so please like and subscribe if you haven't done that yet as well we're just about to 80 and hundreds coming up here at some point so that's great <laughs> so 
Thank you as always. Appreciate the comments. You guys are an inspiration to me as well. And as always, keep hiking.